Hey, what's up, guys? So, welcome to this webinar on how to trade and invest during this market crash. And this webinar is a collaboration with Wiki Expo. So, what we're gonna talk about today in this webinar is gonna be really exciting, okay? First thing first, how to profit from the forex market, commodities market, and also stock market. So, we're gonna go through different types of markets, how they are related to each other, and how can you profit from each of these markets, okay? Aside from that, I'm gonna go down to individual stocks, okay? To buy and so add into your watch list. And I'll give you an idea on what are currencies to buy or short during this market downturn. And also you can apply this knowledge to future market downturns, to future recessions. Okay, and I'm gonna end off with 10 pro tips for you to thrive in this market crash. Basically, like I said, this is a collaboration with WikiExpo. And WikiExpo over the past few years have been organizing really great events, trading conferences, investing conferences. We went to Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia. And just to give a little bit of shout out to Wiki Expo team for taking good care of me so far, especially to Holy, Scott, and also the rest of the team who organized all these events so well to provide you guys so much free value. Credits goes to them, okay? Now to some of you who have no idea who is this random lady talking to you on this webinar? Basically, just a little bit of introduction. I'm a Singapore-based speaker, but I also go to Thailand, Vietnam, and also Malaysia to give talks once in a while. I was a TEDx speaker last year. Over the past few years, I've been featured in newspapers, written for newspapers in Singapore, and also featured in newspapers in Malaysia, featured in Channel News Asia as a young investor, which is a Singapore TV channel, and I've been featured in radio, Singapore radio, and also international TV channels, for example, Warner Bros, and also magazines like FX Trader Magazine. So I've also been ranked number one in uh, Singapore nationwide forex trading contest, competing with traders from all around Singapore. And also I was fortunate enough to be voted as Singapore's top trading guru 2019 by Traders Fair and also top popular analyst in Asia 2019 by WikiFX. I just want to give a shout out to my followers, supporters on YouTube or Instagram because without your vote, I wouldn't get any of these recognitions or awards. If you are new here, then it's okay. Consider subscribing to this channel. A bit of disclaimer before we move on, whatever that I'm sharing with you is just based on my personal opinion. At the end of the day, you still gotta do your own research because you cannot just listen to people blindly and then buy and sell based on that. Understand what I'm saying? A lot of people are panicking about the market crash, but what a lot of people don't tell you is that in this kind of market crashes, there are tons of opportunities. Many people are telling you about the opportunities out there. More millionaires are created during a market downturn, a recession, than any other normal times. When the markets are going up, when everybody's optimistic, when everything is overpriced. Yes, those are good times, but not as good as something like a market crash, something like a recession. In the 2008 recession, the rich grew richer last year, even as the world endured the worst recession in decades. Now here's the thing, during a market downturn, you can either look for opportunities or you can be just like everybody else and panic. And let me tell you something, panic wouldn't get you anywhere. It is hard to put down your fear, put down your uncertainty or anxiety, and then open your eyes, look at opportunities. I know it's hard, but if you just open your ears, open your eyes, seek for opportunities, it's gonna come to you, okay? And I'm gonna present to you some of the opportunities that you can take advantage of. And let me tell you something, over the past few weeks, the smart traders, smart investors, they are telling me, Karen, you know, this market is so easy to earn money. I tripled my trading account, I quadrupled my trading account. Now, my personal portfolio has been up more than 50% in two to three days. What normally takes two to three months for traders to earn that kind of ROI, now you can earn it within two to three days. Now, with that said, with that said, I'm not preaching get rich quick scheme. I'm not telling you to go in and buy right now. I'm just telling you that if you just open your mind and then seek opportunities, you will find it. So I'm gonna share with you how can you take advantage of the market crash right now. You just need four main things, okay? I don't wanna make things complicated because I know some of you are beginners, but if you follow just this simple strategy, you wouldn't go wrong, okay? First thing first, learn how to read sentiment. 
most importantly, learn how to read changes in sentiment so that you know when to get out of the market. And the second thing is intermarket analysis. Nowadays, the markets are all interlinked together. If you are a forex trader, don't just trade in your forex bubble and don't care about stock market because currency moves in tandem with stock market. If you are a stock market trader, don't just look at stock market and don't look at other kind of markets because the movement in US dollars is going to affect or it's going to give you clues as to where the stock market is going to go. Basically, don't create in a bubble, okay? Learn intermarket analysis properly. Learn how each of these markets are related to each other or are they not related to each other. Third thing, learn technicals. Because at the end of the day, yes, you know that the market is going to go down in the long term, but how do you know where to take profit? How do you know when to enter, where to cut loss? So this is where technicals is going to give you the clue, okay? Fourth thing, common sense. Sometimes all you need is just some common sense and then you can make money from this kind of markets. Now first thing first, learn how to evaluate sentiment. When you study finance, you will come across this term in a textbook, in a finance textbook. Risk on and risk off environment. So what is risk on and risk off environment? Basically during a risk on environment, this means that people are optimistic, they want to grow their capital, they want to grow their money, they want to become richer. Basically, this happens when times are good, economy is going up, when stock market is going up, when everybody is shopping, when everybody has tons of money, there are tons of job opportunities available, people are spending money. So basically what happens is, when times are good, you see equities going up, you see derivatives going up, you see safe havens going down, by sell off, I mean going down, and then you see higher currency is going up, okay? And during a risk off environment, when everybody is anxious, everybody is scared, everybody is not spending money, people are out of their jobs, they are getting retrenched. People are pessimistic, they are risk averse. They want to preserve their capital. So during a risk off environment, you'll see markets like money market funds going up, you'll see bond markets going up, you'll see yields going down, then you'll see gold prices going up, you'll see the risk assets selling off. For example, stock market going down, derivatives going down, and then you'll see low yield currencies going up. Okay, so we're gonna look at four markets one by one. Okay, the first one I'm gonna look at the gold market. After that, we're gonna take a look at the oil markets, and then followed by stock markets, followed by forex market, and then we're gonna combine all these four together and show you how they are all interrelated to each other. Okay, so let's look at the gold market right now. You need to ask yourself during this time, during the coronavirus period, during corona time, is it a risk on or risk off environment? Definitely a risk off environment. So, how will gold prices react during risk off environments? When people are scared, they are going to flock into safe havens. And it rises as fear in the markets increase and is inversely correlated to the US dollar and stock market. So in the long term, you'll see an inverse correlation between gold and stock market. So you can see that in 2018, about mid-2018, stock market was going up, right? And gold prices went on a bearish move, okay? When stock market go up, gold prices go down. Stock market went down, gold prices went up. Of course, once in a while, you'll see a positive correlation, but technically, most of the time, it is inversely correlated, okay? Because sometimes you might see, yes, stock market go up, but gold prices also go up because there are a lot of different fundamental factors that drive gold prices. And also understand that there's no two asset classes which are perfectly inversely correlated, okay? At the same time, there's no two asset classes that are perfectly positively correlated. Understand what I'm saying? So what you can do is that you can take advantage of gold prices and also at the same time, if you are into ETFs, you can look into the GLD, right? Which tracks the gold prices. And so if you are somebody who wants a balanced portfolio, you can look into gold ETFs to hedge your portfolio. Especially if you are heavily invested into stocks, you can use gold ETF to hedge your portfolio. But like I said just now, gold prices increase when fear increases. So how do you measure fear? Of course, you can look at the news, but a more specific way to measure fear is you can look at the volatility index, okay? In short, it's called VIX. When it is less than 20, people are being complacent, okay? But the thing is, you don't want VIX to be way too low because when people are too complacent, you know what is going to happen is that people are going to start over leveraging and this is how the dot-com bubble happened. Same thing for 2008. When people become complacent because markets are going up, 
times are doing well, they over leverage and look what happened. Market crash wiped out all the profits. So when this is between 20 to 39, people are starting to become fearful, but they are not panicking. Understand what I'm saying? There's a little bit of anxiety, but not panicking. But when it's more than 40, people are starting to panic, which is what is happening right now. Okay, so if you look back to 2008 recession, look at where VIX is, it went to almost to a 100 level. And what did gold price do in 2008? The good thing about gold price is that when it does retrace in a recession, in a bear market, it wouldn't retrace that much as compared to stock market because during a recession, stock market will be hardest hit, it will drop to more than 50%. But when gold drops during a recession, it will drop very slightly. It's very negligible if you look at a long-term chart. So you can see gold prices drop a bit during 2008, but while the recession is still going on, it actually went up, okay? Because investors are starting to seek it as a safe haven. Right after the recession ended, the gold prices went up, okay? Same thing for the stock market. Dollar index is inversely correlated to gold prices. You can use dollar index as a gauge as to where gold prices is going to go. So you can see that the candlesticks over here, this is the dollar index, and then the orange line over here, this is gold, okay? US dollar index went down, gold prices went up. US dollar index went up, gold prices tanked. So most of the time, again, you see an inverse correlation between the US dollar as well as gold. So if you trade currencies that has the US dollar in it, please take this into account. Understand what I'm saying? Gold also has an inverse correlation with US 10-year yields. So if gold prices are going down, you'll see US 10-year yields going up. And when you see US 10-year yields going up, high chance it will be a risk-on environment. People are optimistic because people are putting their capital to risk assets, for example, the stock market. And if you are investing into the gold ETFs, okay? You see the same thing happening. When S&P 500 goes down, it will rise up, okay? S&P 500 going up, gold ETFs going down. So initially, when the outbreak started, you see gold prices going down. Why is that? It's a safe haven, it should go up, right? Because when people get retrenched, they'll sell off all the assets and then they'll convert it into liquid cash. So you can see initially gold prices were tanking right until at this point, at about 1,400 level, and then it created a support zone over here, okay? So I bought right at this level at about 1450 and right now gold prices are over here. Normally this kind of move would take a few months, but right now it took only a few days. Now when the market does this massive sell-off, it is one clue that tells you that the price might U-turn and then go back up, okay? And also markets are making a triple bottom over here and it's oversold at this level. Right, and there's a supply zone over here. Eventually, prices would have to come up here and then fill the orders of this supply zone. So what happened is that you can either see the gold prices continue to go down from here, or it can go up to this resistance zone and then bounce back down. All right. Then the next market that I'm gonna look at is oil prices. Now, as you already know, most people perceive oil prices as a risk asset. So, remember the framework just now? During a risk-off environment, there will be a risk asset sell-off, okay? So how does oil prices react during risk-off environments? You already know. Put some common sense, okay? Use some common sense. People are not traveling. Airlines are not operating. In fact, I booked two plane tickets in the past two weeks. Both of them have been cancelled. They'd be like, okay, here's your ticket back. People are not allowed to go out. They're not allowed to drive outside. In some countries, what do you think the oil demand is going to be like? It's going to decrease. How does oil prices move? Based on supply and demand. So when there's less demand, oil prices will go down, supply will exceed demand, and hence what is going to happen, oil prices are going to go down. So oil prices are seen by investors as a risk commodity. This means that during a recession, during down times, there will be a decrease in demand and oversupply. Now, of course, a while ago, there was an OPEC meeting. So basically the meeting was all about cutting down the production of oil, but then Russia refused to cut their productions. So basically there was no conclusion after the meeting. That's on the fundamental side, but on the technical side, just look at what happened in 2008, okay, 2008. Oil prices went from a high of $147 all the way down to $33. 
So once all prices recover, you can see that it tested resistance over here a little bit before it tanked further in 2014. So why did oil prices tank during 2014? Because first thing first, US and Canada, they felt that oil prices are too high, so they ramped up their production of oil, okay? And second thing is, the same people who drove oil prices up in 2008 demanded less of oil, and hence because of the decrease in demand and the increase of supply from US, Canada, oil prices tanked. But this for the fundamental side. And look at where it tanked, right here, okay? At this support line over here. And right now, look at where oil prices are. In fact, it went lower than 2008 and it tested this support line. So potentially what you're gonna see happening is oil prices might bounce off from here and then go up. It's hard to imagine that all prices would go to zero. You still see people going to the petrol station, so very hard to see it going down to zero, all right? And also, even if it does go down to zero, OPEC wouldn't let it go down to zero. So if you want to get involved in a oil markets, there are various ways that you can do it, one of which is you can invest into USO, which is the oil ETF. And a lot of people will say, there's no correlation between oil prices and stock market. But personally, I feel that it is more on the positive correlation side because seeing it as a risk asset, okay, it kind of moves in tandem with the stock market a lot. So for example, during 911 or the dot-com bubble, S&P 500 tanked, oil prices also tanked. 2008, S&P 500 tanked, oil prices also tanked. Right now, S&P 500 tanked, oil prices also tanked. When S&P 500 was going up, oil prices was also going up. Of course, you realize that oil prices, they are more volatile as compared to the stock market. So if you feel that oil is too volatile for you, then don't get into it, okay? Same thing for the commodity ETF. It's also more volatile than the stock market. Stock market, you know that in the long term, it's going to go up. But commodity ETF, when you invested many years ago, and when you look at where you are now, you are still at break even. So we have talked a lot about stock market, so let's get into detail about the stock market. Dot com bubble, S&P 500 tanked. 2008, S&P 500 tanked. Because investors, they are seeking safe haven assets, which lead to sell off. They are taking money away from the stock market, putting it into safe havens. So a lot of people, they would panic sell here, panic sell here. But going back to the news that I showed you just now, more millionaires are created during recession. Why is that? Because instead of seeing this as a, oh no, the war is going to end. You see this, just like if you go to Gucci, instead of selling you the usual handbag that you like for $1,000, now it is selling to you at $500. For real, if you go to shopping centers right now, everything is on discount 50%, buy one, free one, one for one. But unfortunately, a lot of people, they are buying discounts from shopping centers instead of looking at the stock market to find discounts. Why are more millionaires created during the recession? Because those investors, instead of going shopping, okay, maybe they do go shopping, but they focus on the stock market and they ask themselves, where can I buy things at a discount? So for smart money, this is a discount opportunity. In the long term, stock market is going to go up. Along the way, it might retrace a little bit because of recession. Okay, we trace a little bit, we trace a little bit. In fact, if you draw this line over here, it retraces to this support. Right now, it is at this support level. In the long term, stock market is going to go up because of inflation. And the, the companies in the S&P 500 index, they are not the same companies all the time. When a certain company doesn't meet the requirement for it to be defined as a good company, it will be kicked out and replaced by a better company. And hence, because of all these factors, S&P 500 in the long term is going to go up. So your job is to buy it when it is at a discount, when it retraces just like this. Of course, you wouldn't know how much would it retrace to. You wouldn't know. So that's why there's this thing called dollar cost averaging. So this means that when it goes down by 20%, then you add to your position. When it goes down to by another 20%, then you add more positions. And you can only do this for stock market index. If you do this for stocks, it will be more risky. Of course, you cannot compare 2008 recession with the market crash right now because it is caused by a pandemic. So if you look at the past pandemics, for example, SARS, which happened 
in between 2002 to 2003, right after SARS ended, MSCI index went up. In the long term, MSCI index goes up. Can you see that? Even though along the way, there are various pandemics, for example, swine flu, H1N1. Same thing for S&P 500. When SARS ended, S&P 500 went up. Basically, you see the same thing happening not only in S&P 500, but also the various other index, for example, the various Asia index, Nikkei, Hang Seng index, same thing for UK index. And you realize one thing, okay, is that when VIX increases, when VIX shoots up, which means that people are fearful, all the indexes would tank. And look at what's happening right now, when VIX shot right up, all the indexes also tanked. Now what I'm telling you here is, you can measure fear by looking at VIX, or you can measure fear just by looking at the index. If all the indexes are down, they are in a bear market, then it tells you that people are fearful. When the indexes are up, it tells you that people are risk taking. It's a risk on environment. Okay, and why can't I wait until everything becomes better, then I buy the market? You know what? S&P 500, the indexes, they are leading indicators for the economy. This has happened in 2008. The S&P 500, you turn from a bearish market to a bullish market before the news even tell you, all right, we are out of recession now. By the time you listen to the news, which is very late, everybody has already gotten in, the market has already moved. All the events has already been priced in. Because the thing is, sometimes these events can be priced in six months in advance, five months in advance. So if you are to ask, can should I listen to the news right now to make decisions for my trading and investing, I wouldn't recommend that. I wouldn't recommend that. And in fact, there's a lot of fake news nowadays. No point. No point. And if you're in Singapore, Straight Times Index, dot com bubble crash, recession crash, and every time it crash, it tested this trend line over here. Do you see that? Right now we are over here. And you see a confluence of this trend line with this support line over here. Do you see that? Now, of course, nobody would know where's the market bottom but you can seek clues from what happened in the past. Understand what I'm saying? So some of the stocks to put on your watch list that are right now at a discount. If you have watched my past stock videos, which I published this week and also last week, Square, Apple, ticker symbol, AAPL, Johnson & Johnson, Bank of America, Disney, Coca-Cola, Walmart, a lot of these stocks are also in the portfolio of Warren Buffett, for example, Coca-Cola. And also the thing is, Johnson & Johnson, it is also a dividend paying stock. So if you are into dividends, you can consider these stocks. And other stocks that I recommend, later I'll tell you where can you find these stock recommendations that I give out, okay? Now the thing is, my background is, I grew up in a family where my parents, they are stock investors. So ever since young, like four years old, I was asking my parents, like, what are you watching on this screen? Like, then my parents started teaching me, okay, green color means the stock's going up. So at a really, really young age, kindergarten, I was really curious about stock market. And also I went to NTU to study finance, where I learned more about stock market and also learned from various different mentors, professional traders, stock market, currency markets, and also derivatives market. So, so the next market I'm going to talk about is forex markets, okay? You need to know these two things, high yield currencies and also low yield currencies. Basically, high yield currencies are countries in which their country pay high interest rates. So a lot of carry traders, they are going to buy high yield currencies and then they are going to sell low yield currencies so that they get an interest payment. So low yield currencies are what people call safe havens. And also high yield currencies, their countries would export a certain commodity that the world really needs from them, okay? So for example, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar. Low yield currencies, for example, dollar, Swiss franc, yen. During a risk on environment, what would people buy? High yield currencies. And when people buy high yield currencies, all these currencies, it's going to go up, okay? During a risk of environment, what would people buy? Low yield currencies. And during risk of environment, you see dollar, Swiss franc, yen going up. Now the question is, which one is more of a safe haven? Normally, normally it is yen, but circumstances change. Sometimes it might shift to dollar instead of yen. 
especially when Japan is tremendously affected, then investors is going to flock to dollar because they feel that U.S. economy is still a stable economy as compared to other countries. If I ask you this question right now, 2008 recession, this currency pair, did it go up or go down? First thing first, always ask yourself, is this a risk on or risk off environment? This is a risk off environment and hence, what are people going to buy? What are people going to sell? First thing first, look at the base currency. Base currency. Is this a high yield or low yield currency? This is a high yield currency. So during a risk off environment, would this high yield currency go up or go down? It will go down. Okay, now the second step. Yen. The counter currency. Would yen go up or go down? How do you know? Is this a high yield or low yield currency? This is a low yield currency. So people are going to buy low yield currencies. For example, yen. Now because Aussie is going down, yen is going up, what do you think is going to happen to Aussie yen? Can you see over here? 2008 recession, it tanked massively. When Fed cut interest rates, it went back up. Sentiments changed. But unfortunately, the rate cut that Fed executed recently didn't work out. Because when the Fed cut rates, the stock market continues tanking. So what do you think happened to Aussie Yen during Corona time? What do you think happened to Aussie Yen? Again, it went down. Now I told my students end of last month, okay, which is somewhere over here. When the situation get worse, it's going to continue tanking. So if you could have sold here, you could have made this you could have write this trend all the way down, okay? Same thing for Aussie dollar. From February onwards, it started tanking, okay? And the thing is, every time the trend ends, you see clues like a massive sell-off, okay? And also, when you learn to read candlestick price section, it also gives you clues as to, okay, this is the end of the trend, or the trend is going to reverse a bit, it's going to retrace a bit. Now, you can see that recently, there's a little bit of recovery in Aussie dollar. Now, the thing is because China is one of Australia's largest trading partner, and hence, when China recovered, you see a little bit of recovery in Aussie dollar. How about dollar cat? People are buying dollar, selling off Canadian dollar, and hence, you see dollar cat going up, right? Canadian yen. Now, the thing is, all prices tanked, right? Canada is a major exporter of oil, and hence, Canadian dollar is going to move in close relation with all prices. So, if you put all these markets together, you realize that in the long term, they tend to move in a certain way that is repeatable during every market crash, okay? But of course, in the short term, when you zoom into the short term, you see very random relationships. The thing about intermarket analysis is that the correlation will only work out when you trade long term, okay? When you trade long term, when you look at a bigger time frame, when you zoom out and look at the big picture. So from October last year until now, you can see S&P 500 was in the bullish run, markets were doing good, and then it tanked in this recent few months. Same thing for all prices going up, and then it tanked slightly earlier than S&P 500. And the thing is, all can also be a leading indicator for your currency pairs like Canadian Yen. Very often, all prices will start to move before currencies like Canadian Dollar. So you can say that oil is like a leading indicator for a lot of currency pairs and also other markets. Last year, when Apple announced a massive revenue cut, oil prices also you turn first before Canadian dollar. Same thing happening. So you can see last year, S&P 500 went up along with gold, which means that during this period, the coalition did not apply, which happens sometimes. So sometimes when you see that the coalition did not play out, the way you want it to be, based on textbook knowledge, why did it not work out? Because context is different. Like I said, you need to apply common sense, don't just follow the rule, okay, because this is inversely correlated, so I need to buy this, sell this all the time. You need to look at context. Different context would cause correlations to work out, different context would cause correlations to not apply at all. So, you can see Canadian Yen, it dropped slightly later than oil prices because oil prices, it leads Canadian Yen. And also when oil prices are going down, high chance you see Canadian Yen also going down because like I said, Canadian dollar, most of the time it moves in tandem with oil prices, okay? Now the other thing is that you can use US 10-year yields, you can use bond prices to give you clues mm. as to how any of these markets is going to go. And also you can look at VIX, okay? 
apply all of these things together to support your investment, to support your trades. Okay, some pro tips for you to thrive in this market crash. This is very important, okay? Make sure you follow these rules. First thing first, do your research before buying. Like I said, don't just listen to recommendations. Money doesn't matter if it's from Warren Buffett or me or some guru that you see on CNBC. Because even people like Warren Buffett can be wrong. And when he is wrong, he loses millions of dollars. But when he is right, he makes billions. Nobody can be right all the time, okay? So make sure you do your research. And practice stringent risk management because what happened during 2008 market crash was people were over leveraging because they were getting complacent and hence their risk management goes out the door. Doesn't matter if you're investing to stock market, you're trading forex, you're trading gold, oil, make sure you practice your risk management properly and then learn from past recessions. There's lots of lessons that you can learn from it. I've done a couple of videos in the past. You can go and check it out. And most importantly, understand the asset you're buying. So if you're buying a stock, a company that you don't understand, you don't know what your business is all about, don't just buy it just because people are recommending it. Even if you bought it, you're not comfortable holding it. You'll be like, okay, is this stock going to work out or not? Then you're in trouble. Okay? Because if you buy stocks like this, if you buy currencies like this, it's going to become a habit. And this habit is not good when you are an investor trader. Don't buy sell based on news rumors. Now the thing is, if you trade supply and demand zones, you realize that sometimes what the news is doing is that they are going to spit you out news to entice you to buy so that the price will go to a supply zone so that the institutions can sell massively and then everybody gets killed. So if you learn how all of this, I don't know what you call it, conspiracy, propaganda, theory works, then you wouldn't even listen to news. You just listen to it for fun, for entertainment. And so you realize that there's a lot of conflict of interest when it comes to news presenters. Like, they're telling you to buy a stock, but at the back end, they're selling. They're massive selling. Number six, don't just buy because it's cheap. Because cheap can get cheaper. A lot of people will be like, oh, this stock is selling at 50 cents. Let me just buy it. Then you ask them, why do you buy it? I don't know. Because it's cheap. That's not the way to buy a stock. I've seen way too many investors, they get killed because they bought into a cheap stock. Sometimes a stock can be cheap for a reason because it is a bad company. It is a bad business to begin with. It doesn't have free cash flow to sustain a recession. That's why it is cheap. Next thing, invest with money you can afford to lose. Don't go and borrow money and invest in the stock market because you feel that you're going to come out of this as a millionaire. Imagine if all your stocks did not work out. Then how are you going to pay the debt when you have no liquid cash? Not only do you now have no cash, you're owning people money. So only invest when you have some extra cash. If right now you don't have any extra cash, you need those money to pay rent, to pay for your food. I suggest that you just spend this free time learning. Instead of using this time to watch TV, play games, why not use this time to read investing books, to watch investing videos, to learn investing online? Our ancestors back in 1929, Great Depression, don't have the privilege of internet. Next thing, control your greed and fear. Don't be too greedy, don't be so fearful that you don't invest anything at all, even though you have the money to do so. I'm sure you've heard of this quote by Warren Buffett. Probably you heard it so many times that you're fed of it. When other people are greedy, you should become fearful. When other people are fearful, you should be greedy. Warren Buffett has a reason for saying this. I believe he does. And also make full use of your free time to learn and practice, like what I said. If you're out of your job, you're retrenched, you have nothing to do at home, you're getting depressed in this lockdown, you cannot go out to shop, why not use this free time to build up a skill that would eventually produce enough income that exceeds your paycheck. And the next thing is, don't hoard, help others in need and take care. In times like this, there are people who need help. So if you have the ability to help other people, Please do it. So during this whole entire lockdown, what I'm doing is that I'm providing a lot of free videos just a way to help other people. Like some of the lessons I can charge for it, but I choose to publish it out for free, okay? Like once in a while, I'll give out stock recommendations for people to buy. So where do you get all these free stock recommendations and tips? It'll be on my YouTube channel, okay? If you found this useful so far, if you can support my channel, share this with your friends, that'll be good because I spend a lot of effort to run this channel. 
produce videos. Each video takes me about 6 hours. Now if you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email. But if you are looking for broker recommendations, book recommendations, I've already done videos on that, so you can go search it for yourself. But if you have any general trading questions, you can drop me an email. So to my supporters, may the peace be with you in 2020 and with that, thank you so much and I wish you all the best. Take care.